for this event in our press event. He is Mr. Rucker. Would you please come forward? Good afternoon, everyone. I am Kendall Rucker, a freshman majoring in pre-medical biology here at Tennessee State University. And on behalf of my fellow Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute scholars, it is my pleasure to welcome you to today's press event with HCA Healthcare, TriStar Health, and TSU for our white coat ceremony. It is now my honor to introduce our leader. While the country has Vice President Kamala Harris, we have a dynamic, trailblazing, and innovative university president. Everyone, please welcome our eighth president and first female, President Glenda Glover. Out of Levi Watkins Scholars. Oh, they're out here. Now you can be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rucker, our future TSU graduate pre alum and future medical doctor, for bringing me on. I appreciate that. Good afternoon and welcome to everyone. Today is special in the history of our university as we present the newest scholars the newest cohorts of the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute during their white coat ceremony. Uh, there seems to be something going on. Let me just let that get straight. Okay, let's give the, the cohort two with the white coats another round of applause. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm extremely pleased to share this moment with our partners, HCA Healthcare and TriStar Health, and CEO Sam Hazen, and members of his executive team, and all of you. Not only are we celebrating this new journey for our future healthcare professionals, future physicians and surgeons, but we're also celebrating the TSU HCA partnership. It is a partnership with the sole purpose of investing in the greater, the greatest resource our institution has to offer, and that is our students. The relationship didn't start today. It's been in existence at this Nashville-based healthcare giant for a number of years, as they have helped to educate and mentor and employ TSU students over the years. Our announcement today highlights the partnership that continues to have a positive impact on TSU students as future doctors, nurses, healthcare administrators, and technology experts. This announcement is even more special because it is homecoming week. Thousands of alumni, and family, and friends are walking our campus, some re reliving their college days. I was doing it also. <laughs> While some of us are here for the first time, 
as we are back in stride again. We all know there's no homecoming like a TSU homecoming. Before I introduce the next speaker and take my seat, I'd like to acknowledge the TSU executive team uh, with this project. Uh, first, let me just ask our members of the president's cabinet to stand and if there are any members of the executive council that our special council would you stand the deans executive council thank you all very much we also have our faculty trustee present dr bill johnson would you stand thank you and the chair of our faculty senate um, dr Dr. Young Sigler, I was trying to get your first name, but just drop, you know, in the microphone, you forget. Dr. Dr. Young Sigler. Okay, thank you. If I left anybody out, I apologize, because I'm going not from script. I understand Trustee Van Pinnock is here. Trustee Van Pinnock, Trustee Van Pinnock. The member of our TSU Board of Trustees, thank you, Trustee Peanut, for being present. Now, I want to acknowledge the executive team with this initiative. Dr. Nolan McMurray, Dean of the College of Life and Physical Sciences, and where the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute is housed. Thank you. Dr. Lynn, Lynn Lee, Dean of the College of Engineering. Dr. Lee and the departments of computer science and their respective staffs. And any other academic deans and TSU, TSU alumni, supporters, parents, students, and those joining us by live stream. Thank you so much for your support. Again, thank you for joining us and congratulations to our students. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Sam Hazen, CEO of HCA Healthcare and TriStar Health. Please give him a warm TSU welcome, Mr. Hazen. Well, hello. Uh, thank you, President Glover. Uh, this is a wonderful occasion. Everybody keeps talking about a partnership. I like to think of us as neighbors and we're just across the street and um, I grew up in a family that supported their neighbors and I think uh, this relationship that we have here today is one about neighbors helping neighbors and we're fortunate enough to be able to do that. It's interesting, I was listening to uh, some of the students in the ante room before I came in here and there was technologists, there were students that wanted to go on to medical school. Congratulations to all of you um, as you pursue those uh, those uh, objectives, but our company today uh, is in a situation where technology and workforce development is key to our success. We have five strategic initiatives in our company today, and two of them are here front and center with this particular relationship and this partnership, and we're extremely proud of being a part of it. And I'm grateful to the TSU team that helped us on this uh, journey and the uh, continuation of our relationship. And I'm especially uh, proud and, and, thank, and grateful to the HCA team who also was a big part of this. I think as we look forward, uh, healthcare is a very simple concept for me. It's people taking care of people in need. And the more we can do to support people in their training and in their development, and then the more we can use technology in the healthcare industry, the more effective we can be at delivering high quality care. And that's where we're focused as an organization, and I'm proud of the relationship that we have with the College of Engineering, the computer science uh, programs, as well as other programs uh, that our organizations have together. So, uh, President Glover, uh, we're privileged to be here, and I stand here on behalf of HCA uh, thanking you for what you and your colleagues do for students and for the development of talent in healthcare. So I have a wonderful, diversity leader in Sherry Neal. Um, I grew up with three sisters, 
uh, all of them are very strong-willed and tell me what to do. I have a quasi-sister in Sherry Neal, who is HCA's Chief Diversity Officer, and I'm proud to uh, introduce her to this group. She probably doesn't need an introduction, but Sherry's been instrumental in our outreach, in our programs uh, with respect to academic partnerships, uh, community outreach, uh, and our DEI agenda broadly. So, Sherry, uh, you're up next. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. He doesn't always do what I tell him to do, though. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with you. Um, thank you, Sam, for your comments. I want to be transparent with you all and tell you that, you know, we have some great conversations at HA Healthcare about the future. And Sam and I were having a conversation about pipeline opportunities, and he offered a solution. And the investments that we're going to talk about today are creating pathways in the future. So I'm so appreciative of our leadership, also appreciative of John Foster, um, our national group president, American group president. Ooh, can you believe I said that? <laughs> um, who's here, who's also a visible champion and ambassador of our diversity, equity, and inclusion work at HCA Healthcare. TSU, you've already heard it once, I'll say it again, happy homecoming. We know this is a big week for you, we're excited to be here with you for this special announcement. I want to express my sincere appreciation to the TSU team, our HCA Healthcare uh, DEI teams, our TriStar Health teams for putting all of this together. We know there were a lot of details that you worked on and I wanna recognize you and thank you for your work and efforts. I wanna especially recognize Sharon Gentry, our AVP of Education and Strategic Partnerships. Um, her leadership in this has been instrumental and so thank you Sharon for your hard work. Today we are recognizing a gift total of 1.5 million with one point, yes, awesome. I should have paused there. Thank you. Truly exciting. With 1.4 million going to the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute and $100,000 going to the College of Engineering. So we can applaud again. Our gift today is part of our three year $10 million investment to expand opportunities with historically black colleges and universities and Hispanic serving institutions. We are interested in investing and want to invest in careers, in your careers in healthcare. But successfully building a more diverse workforce is more than a financial commitment and investment. You've heard it before, it requires true partnership and takes time and commitment. I am proud, as you have already heard, that over the years, we have enjoyed a strong partnership, a strong neighborly relationship with TSU. It's impacted our organization, it's impacted TSU students and the Nashville community. From our shared commitment of supporting the advancement of women through the Women of Legend and Merit Awards to providing scholarships and internships, we are proud of the powerful relationships that we have forged. And you're not only our partner, you're a friend, truly an extension of our corporate campus just around the corner as we feel we are a part of the TSU family. And you know how family is. They call you in good times and bad. I wanna personally thank Dr. Glenda Glover for her leadership as president of this great university, for her transparent and authentic leadership. She doesn't always call for money, although she does sometimes. A lot of the times she just calls to say, I'm thinking of you and I hope you're doing well. And for that, I'm appreciative. So thanks again to everyone who's played such an incredible part in this partnership. Together, we are creating healthier, more equitable tomorrows. Now with that, I'd like to welcome Dr. Kevin Hamilton, the Chief Medical Officer of TriStar Skyline Medical Center. Well, I'm honored to be here on behalf of TriStar Health as we embark on a partnership that will unlock possibilities for future physicians and healthcare leaders. 
We're proud to invest in scholarships that will continue Dr. Levi Watkins Jr.'s vision of creating opportunities for young African Americans and other students of color who want to pursue a career in medicine. I'm privileged to work alongside some incredible physicians who are deeply committed to caring for and improving human life through the values and legacy established by our founders, Drs. Thomas Frist Jr. and Sr. As we continue to grow physician and education training programs at our hospitals, we strive to instill the values of kindness, compassion, and an unwavering commitment to quality and equitable health care. We're excited to partner with these scholars in the coming years, and I know we can expect great things from you in the future. We also want to congratulate our HCA Healthcare ITG scholars who are part of the College of Engineering. We know that it takes a large and diverse group of colleagues across multiple disciplines to deliver high quality and compassionate health care, and ITG plays a crucial role in how we deliver care each day. I know there will be a wealth of opportunities for you to grow and to learn and to make a difference through this partnership. So with that, I would now like to introduce Ms. Barbara C. Merle, Chair of the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute. Good afternoon. The Dr. Levi Watkins Institute is named in honor of a Tennessee State University alumnus and renowned cardiac surgeon. It is designed to expand the pipeline of outstanding young African American and other minority students who demonstrate the ability, compassion, and desire to enter college to prepare for medical and dental schools and a career in these professions. Presently, as you see, there are 41 young scholars in this three-year accelerated undergraduate program. Please give them a round of applause. We are excited. I want you to know that. <laughs> we are so excited and extremely grateful that Hospital Corporation of America, HCA, has embraced the commitment to partner with us in this venture by supporting students who will become HCA scholars who are focused on pursuing a medical degree and a career in medicine serving in underserved communities. I know we are grateful, but I know parents are also grateful, so I'm gonna ask the parents to please stand. Parents of these students, will you please stand? So we know that together, we can provide opportunities for talented and aspiring physicians, address disparities in healthcare, and advance health equity. And now I would like to invite Dr. Glover back to the podium. Thank you, Dean Mayor. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute um, is the brainchild of Barbara Murrow. She had nurtured and, and watched the program grow and is now being sustained with great partners like HCA and TriStar. So let's give her another round of applause. As we're coming up, to, uh, I just noticed that we do have Dr. Edith Mitchell who is present. Would you stand, Dr. Mitchell? Dr. Mitchell is a former member of the TSU Board of Trustees. And she's a leading healthcare professional and a TSU alum, so thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Well, the future of healthcare is in very capable hands. We're thankful to HCA and TriStar for leading the way. This is indeed a special day for TSU. So, as we will now have our check presentation from Mr. Hazen and HCA TriStar. We'll ask the photographers if you want to come forward.
think we can do better than that for $1.5 million? So we're excited about this announcement. We just, you just saw photos with the 1.5 million for the university. And now you will see a photo op for, specifically for the Dr. Levi Watkins Scholars in the amount of $1.4 million.
We will now move to part two of our program. You know, part one is always let's get the money. <laughs> so, far, so part two is our actual white coat ceremony. So I'm going to call Dean Nola McMurray up to, uh, to preside through this ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, President Glover. Uh, let me first say good afternoon to everyone. Um, and I'd like to welcome you to the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Uh, lecture series and white coat ceremony. Um, this is a very important occasion, uh, which continues to honor the legacy of uh, Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. and his goal of increasing the number of minority physicians and, physicians and dentists providing much needed uh, care in the minority communities. So again, I'd like to thank you for attending and continuing uh, to support us. Uh, before I go any further, I'd like to call uh, the other stage guests up, uh, Drs. Robinson. Uh, is, where, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> all right. Um, but, and Dr. Edith Mitchell, where's Dr. Mitchell? Dr. Mitchell, come on up, please come up. Okay, B before I begin, um, I, I must thank uh, President Glover for her, her unconditional support of the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute. Um, I, I, I have to do that. Um, and secondly, I'm going to have to thank Dean Barbara Merrill, uh, Chair of the uh, Dr. Levi Watkins Institute, um, Ms. Lolita Hodge, Program Coordinator, Ms. Jackie Cullum, Program Advisor, Dr. John Robinson, and Dr. Sharon Peters. Uh, these individuals have made all of this possible, and I want to say thank you to them personally and publicly. Okay, so we'll proceed with the program. I have the pleasure of introducing uh, our speaker today who is uh, returning home to Nashville, Dr. Troy Woodard. Dr. Woodard is an honor graduate of Martin Luther King Magnet High School. Uh, from there, he went on to receive a Bachelor of Science degree from DePaul University in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, while at DePaul University, uh, he received the prestigious Presidential Science Scholarship. He was also a track and field athlete and co-founder of the DePaul University Gospel Choir. He then went on to attend medical school at John Hopkins University, uh, completing the requirements for the MD degree and graduating in 2003. From there, he went on to Loyola University Medical Center, where he completed his residency in otolaryngology, Angology, head and neck surgery. Currently, Dr. Woodard is a full professor in the Department of Otolaryngology, Head and Neck Surgery, and practices rhinology, sinus, and skull-based surgery at Cleveland Clinic. He is a uh, member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity and a champion for diversity and very committed to increasing the number of minorities entering the medical uh, fields. In 2021, Dr. Woodard became the first African-American chair of the Board of Governors of the American Academy of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery. So would you join me please in welcoming Dr. Troy Woodard, our speaker.
Got to raise it a little higher. <laughs> All right, let's see. I need someone to log in the computer. in a minute. All right, um, before I begin, I would like to thank Tennessee State University and the Levi Watkins Institute for allowing me to come to uh, speak to you today. To the students, um, I like speaking things into existence. So I know that you're an undergrad now, but you are physicians. You are change makers. You are healers. Okay, going forth, that's who you are. So I would like to welcome you to the profession, the medical profession. Now, I've been racking my brain trying to figure out what could I say? And so during this journey, you will hear numerous talks about the wonders and the responsibilities of being a physician, how great it is. But I thought I'll do something a little different today. I thought I would tell you my journey and things that I wish I was told before I began. Things that would have made uh, my navigating this pathway a lot easier. So I'm going to tell you my journey, those things that I learned along the way, and provide little tips and pearls of wisdom that can help you be successful on this journey. So let's begin. You heard, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I grew up uh, in a single parent household, me and my mom. My dad died when I was 10 years old. And so I was uh, pretty smart, book smart, um, you know, throughout school and high school, pretty popular. I was uh, uh, voted best all around, did a lot of sports, went to state in high jump, um, even uh, participated on the basketball team. Now let's talk a little bit more about the basketball team. So during that time, that's when I encountered my first mentor. You're going to see a theme here about mentors, okay, and how they can influence your life, change your life. And so my, fifth, my first mentor was Pastor James Shelton. And you may say, well, how can a basketball coach influence you? Well, really, to me and many on our team, he was like a father figure. All right? And so he taught us to lead not only on the basketball court, but also out in the world by being, you know, respectful, a hard worker, um, you know, and, and really just having determination no matter the circumstance. He was such an influence. This is him in 2003 attending um, my medical school graduation at Johns Hopkins. So let's go back to the high school. I told you I was really successful and I wanted to go to Georgetown. That's where I wanted to go. But during my interview, right here on the, uh, I was interviewed by a doctor on Church Street. I still remember that day like it was yesterday. He says, um, you know, in the middle of the interview, I don't think you have what it takes to study all night at Georgetown. 
So immediately I was shocked. I finished the interview. My mom was sitting out in the car waiting. Get in the car, started crying. You know, man, he just told me all these things, all those accolades meant nothing. I wasn't good enough. And so, you know, my mom then is gonna do like most mothers. That's okay, baby. <laughs> You're good enough, forget them. And so I said, okay, screw Georgetown, excuse me, but screw Georgetown. <laughs> and so um, I ended up going to DePaul University. And as you heard, I got uh, half academic scholarship and half athletic scholarship. And so during that time, things were a lot different. The internet was just coming out. And so we had to, if we wanted to investigate how to get into med school or to different schools, we had to get this large book. And it had all the different universities, their requirements, the, the, you know, the student population, everything you wanted to know. So I read through that book. And in it, it also said that you needed to do well on MCAT. They prefer lab experience. So I said, okay, I'm gonna get me a job uh, in the lab. So I go to my chairman's office of the biology department and I says, hey, do you have a job that I can do? He says, for you, we have nothing. And those were his words, for you, we have nothing. So then I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna be a doctor, right? Speak things into existence, folks. And so what I had to do is take another path, right? Life is rarely straightforward. Twists and turns, but you're gonna get there. And so I thought about a lady who I met a couple of years prior, Dr. Barbara Murrell. She changed my life. Let me tell you this story. So I was in a summer program and um, basically it was for minority students interested in science. And really in this program, I was, it was between Vanderbilt and, and we would alternate between Vanderbilt and Meharry. And really at Meharry, that's where I saw my first black doctors. I didn't see any black doctors until then, till high school. Didn't even, I mean, I knew they existed, but they weren't real to me because I never met one. So I was there and I was like, ah, oh, okay. I can be like this, I can do this. So one day, um, we're in school, uh, well, Basically, we're in the, the summer program, and I tell her, you know, is there any opportunities for me to make extra money? Remember, my mom is a single parent, and at that time, she was, got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. She was laid off. We didn't have much money, and I needed to have money for my books. Even though I had these scholarships, it didn't cover books, and it didn't cover extra food, all right? And I was hungry in college, so I needed to eat. Um, but anyway, she says, you know what? I tell you what. She asked around and there were some physicians who let me work in their yard. And so I would do yard work and to make extra money. One day though, this stands out. She drove up and says, how's it going? I was running behind, I was putting mulch down. You know, this lady got out, took off her suit coat, took off her shoes, got on her knees and helped me put mulch down. I will never forget that. And to this day, I was like, okay, I wanna be like her. I'm gonna be a physician, but I'm gonna give back just like she did. That was about 25 years ago. And she's still doing it. Give her another round of applause. So I got my lab experience at Meharry and I was ready to go. I, I fulfilled all the check boxes according to that book. And so I go to my pre-med advisor and I says, you know, I looked through this book and these are the schools I want to apply to. He tells me, you may want to rethink your choices. These are two high level schools, high tier schools for you. You may want to look at the lower tier schools. Again, someone just spewing lies. I'll just say lies right just call it what it is and so I started to think about my mom and you know my coach 
all the things that they instilled in me, perseverance, hard work, determination. And I was like, you know what? Screw you in my head, because <laughs> I'm going to do it. And, you know, whenever you encounter some similar situation, you got to persevere like the palm tree, okay? Let me tell you about the palm tree. Many people think, oh, it's a pretty and it's skinny. It's specially designed to have bounce back. It's specially designed that when the winds blow against it, it bends and it bounces back. But you know, when the winds blow against it, the roots grow stronger and deeper. All right, so when you hear someone tell you that you're no good, you can't do it, let your roots grow deeper, get stronger, and show them. So I went ahead and I applied to Johns Hopkins, Hopkins despite um, the advice of my counselor. And you know what? I was granted an interview. And so I was all excited and everything. But then I realized it's a little different now because things are done electronically over Zoom and virtual. You actually, at that time, had to go. You had to get there, spend the night, get up early. That cost money. Didn't have money. And actually, you know, um, during that time, it was, it was really difficult for us. And so I remember saying, well, I'm not going to put an extra burden on my mother because she's really sick with rheumatoid arthritis. She's laid off. And how can I tell her that I need her to buy me a plane ticket, right, um, a suit and shoes? Because I didn't have any of that. And so what I decided to do was write the president of my university. And I was like, well, and I always believe, God, if you, if you want me to do something, you're going to take care of it. And so, you know, he, I was surprised. I got a phone call from his office. says, oh, he would like to speak to you. So he bought me that ticket, actually gave me money to buy a suit and shoes. I went on that interview and got accepted. And so, while I'm there, I'm sorry, this is emotional because I normally don't, I don't, I, I normally don't um, expose myself like this or I'm normally not as vulnerable to people, but I think it's very important to know that whatever you go through, you're not going to be alone, okay? So, when I get there, um, I meet this gentleman, Dr. Levi Watkins, right? And so you've heard a lot about them, but let me tell you, those words cannot contain his personality, his determination, I tell you, no way. And so you may hear that, that he was the first person to successfully implant, you know, the um, automatic defibrillator. But in my opinion, he was much more. So. During his tenure at Hopkins, he was responsible for changing the culture, making it more equitable for underrepresented minorities. Actually, during his tenure, African American numbers increased fivefold. And so, when you think about it, I got there because of him, because of Dr. Muro, standing on their shoulders. And I'll never forget that. So while I was at Hopkins, something crept in. And we all experienced this, imposter syndrome. Here I was sitting there in class with people who came from long lineages of physicians, people whose fathers were CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, who they would, on the weekends, go party on their boats, right? And I'm like, thinking, I'm not good enough. I don't deserve to be here. I'm going to fail. We all experience that. I remember one time I was sitting in um, our lecture hall, and I just started, just burst out crying. Didn't know what was going on. This is never, I've never experienced that before. And I get up because I was ashamed, and I ran out. And so my friend came, and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, I don't know. Something's wrong with me. And she was like, you need to go talk to somebody. And I was like, well, I, I'm not crazy. I don't have a mental illness. No, what do you mean talk to somebody? 
But what I learned during that moment was that counselors, therapists, are not there because you have a mental illness. They help you manage your emotions and help you cope and deal with it in a, a beneficial way. And so I said, okay, well, I'll go and talk to someone. And so for you, it's okay to seek help. This is what I learned. It's okay to seek help if you're having difficulties. And so when I was talking to her, she, did tell, she told me, you belong here. Before we begin, you belong here. And I want you to know, you belong here. If you ever start to sense that you're developing this imposter syndrome, these are tips that she gave me that I still use today. Because no matter where you are, if you're down there, if you're up here, imposter syndrome can sneak as, you know, can show its ugly head. And so make a list of all the things you've done, your accolades, to show yourself that you're qualified. Positive affirmations. I had to do that this morning. You are somebody, you are loved, you are God's son, you're gonna help some people, you're gonna heal some people. I say that just about every day. Own your accomplishments. That doesn't mean be arrogant, but you deserve it. And you gotta visualize your success. How can you become something if you can't see it? You can't. So I initially wanted to go to Johns Hopkins and be just like Ben Carson. Well, the Ben Carson before he got into politics, okay? <laughs> Let me just say that. Um, anyway, <laughs> I remember I was on my rotation in, in neurosurgery rotation and I realized I didn't like it. And so I rotated through all different specialties and that may happen to you you may think you're gonna go in and be a obstetrician or internal medicine doctor but you may like being surgery being a surgeon keep an open mind and so what happened is I rotated during um, you know in otolaryngology and met these three individuals I was so impressed because they could have a busy surgical life and still take care of their families, right? One was a pilot. I mean, they did all types of things. But what I learned is that, you, this is very important, your mentors do not have to look exactly like you. All right? If someone's willing to uh, give you a hand, take it. Take advantage of it. And so it's because of them that I became an otolaryngologist, uh, ear, nose, and throat, head and neck surgeon, okay? So now I'm in my residency and I was just, oh, I made it now. You know, I've overcome most of my obstacles. I'm a doctor, right? Thought I really won't have to deal with this much stuff. I was wrong, wrong. The first lesson that I learned was you don't know everything. I remember when I was in the burn unit and a patient was about to, to die. Uh, well, well, not really about to die, but they were, their blood pressure was really low, like, you know, 70 systolics, really low. And so the nurse says, well, doctor, what would you like to do? And the chief resident had to go to a meeting and he was like, do not call me. So I was like, oh crap, okay, I don't, I don't want this patient to die, especially while I'm here. So. I remember reading the book and it said epi. So I said, give one milligram of epinephrine, IV. <laughs> so, and she says, you sure? I said, yep. She's like, okay. So the patient was just laying there, non-responsive. The machines were there. She injects it. The, the machines go, do, 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 you know, and just, just all types of alarms. And then the patient just wakes up, ah, right? That scared me to death. <laughs> I almost died. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, you know, normally they give smaller doses, just a little at a time, and then you wait and see. I said, well, why did you tell? But 
because I thought I knew everything. Be humble. Never forget that same, man, I'm so happy I got a lot of these out of the way early um, because they'll come back and haunt you. In that same unit, you're on call, and um, I, I guess I had an attitude with the nurses, and it was time for bed. Went to bed, phone rang every 15 minutes that whole night. Didn't get an ounce of sleep. So the next day, I was like, well, boy, the burn unit is tough. And then my co-resident was like, no, it's great, I love it. You know, you get a lot of sleep. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, did you piss them off? And I was like, well, so the next time I was there, I was nice. And I was like, hey, uh, yeah. So what they did was they called me once around nine o'clock at night and they all just stood in line getting everything out. Never heard a peep from them for the rest of the night. Learned my lesson. Be humble, treat people how you want to be treated. The people you see going up, same people you see coming back down. So the medical field, it's sacred and respected. You know, the, when patients see you, they're at their most vulnerable state. That's why it's important to watch what you say because life and death are in the tongue. So you'll walk the halls, you'll see patients coming and going, some are smiling. Some of them just been told they only got six months to live. Some of them have a kid up there who's dying of cancer. Everything you say is important. You know, I think of a couple of stories and you know, you might say, well, words can't, can't heal a person. I beg to differ. It may not necessarily be able to physically heal them, but emotionally and spiritually, it can give them the wherewithal to keep fighting. I remember I had a patient, so I do, a, I do skull base surgery. So remember I said I didn't like neurosurgery, comes back 360, and what do I do? Remove brain tumors through the nose. And so this, this, this gentleman had a tumor, and it was really large. It was like invading his eye, and we had to tell him, hey, we can save your life, but we have to take your vision. Tough, tough. And you will never be able to smell again. And so this particular gentleman, um, well, he was left with one eye. We just had to take the, the eye that was invaded with cancer. And so he was like, no, I just want to die. I can't have a life. And so it was my job as his physician to encourage him to just get him um, the, the, the stamina to want to live. Thank God I, I, I you know, convinced him. He, was, had a successful surgery, but I will never forget this. You know, the things that he was mostly worried about was that he was opening up a brewery, making his own beer, and how could he do that? He put all his life savings in his brewery. How could he do that if he can't taste the beer that he's making? And then he had little kids. He was very concerned that they would, wouldn't love him or wouldn't want to hug him anymore um, when he's missing an eye. But I'll never forget uh, I went to go talk to him, and his family came. He was like, oh, this is it. I don't know how they're going to do. Man, those kids, as soon as they saw their dad, just ran and jumped up on the bed and hugged him. That was very touching. And now to this day, he has a successful brewery. Now, his wife tastes the beer now. <laughs> but there is life and death in the power of your tongue. Remember, medicine is a team sport. I'll repeat this. It is a team sport. There is no I in team, no competition. If you see your brother, your sister falling back, help them. When you're in the me medical field, you'll realize instantly that it takes a whole team to take care of patients from the physicians, to the nurses, to the environmental service people. Everybody makes the team work. 
I also thought that, well, I'm a doctor, so I, I, I shouldn't experience these microaggressions. And we know that's not true. We experience them all the time. But this is an opportunity not to get upset. Remain calm. Change the way you think a little bit. Well, maybe they meant, you know, they had a positive intent. But also use this time as an educational moment. You may say, well, how? Well, depending on the circumstance, some circumstances you may have to wait till a later time and set an appointment, but other circumstances, if it's your buddy or your classmate says something um, that catches you off guard and says, well, you know, that joke um, didn't sit with me well, it offended me, and then you can explain why. Remember your why. The journey you're embarking on is a wonderful journey. Wonderful. You're going to be able to change people's lives. You're going to heal them. You are going to be able to give back and bring other students coming through this program. <laughs> you're going to be able to lead them. But there will be challenges, and that's when you have to remember your why. My why is because I love helping people, love patients, love giving back. My why is also because of Dr. Levi Watkins, Mrs. Barbara Murrell. That's my why. So what is your why? Remember it. Lastly, self-care is mandatory. We get so caught up in our day, and you will see the amount of work that you have to do. It's a lot, but you can do it. But take time to refill yourself. You cannot serve others if you're empty. So planning your schedule, planning your day, I'm going to the gym, or I'm doing yoga classes, or I'm going for a walk, I'm going to shoot pool, whatever. Make it part of your calendar. You, you're gonna be studying all hours of the night, but you can take an hour break. It will keep you going. It will help sustain you. So finally, I just wanna say, Congratulations. Your successes and failures are what make you who you are. Own them and learn from them. You are the next chain agents. You belong here, but remember to persevere despite any headwinds. Remain humble. Be nice. Speak life. Act as a team. Work as a team and take care of yourself. Again, I want to welcome you to the profession. Um, thank you very much. Dr. Woodard, I, I want to thank you for a truly amazing and uh, personal presentation and your words of encouragement, inspiration, and uplift. So let's thank Dr. Woodard again. That was really amazing. <laughs> Next, we will have a special announcement by Brigadier General Dr. Edith Mitchell, uh, Advisory Board Chair. Thank you very much. And thank you, Dr. Woodard. We get to see each other periodically for a number of um, events. Uh, I'd like to congratulate our students. You are, you are it. For many of us, um, we have known Dr. Levi Watkins for many years. And as an inspiration, for his work, I too have continued the effort uh, regarding increasing the number of underrepresented minorities in medicine and continue to uh, do so at my university, which is the Sidney Kimmel Medical College of Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, uh, where I I'm one of the associate directors of the Cancer Center 
but I am also the founder of the Center to Eliminate Cancer Disparities. And with other colleagues there uh, in Philadelphia, we want to announce that Thomas Jefferson University and Sidney Kimmel Medical College of the University will be one of the next universities to join Mrs. Merle and the Levi Wat Dr. Levi Watkins <laughs> Institute. And Dr. Glover, Mrs. Merle, uh, Dr. Wood, and others. I look forward to seeing some of our students here in Philadelphia uh, during their undergraduate years, spending summers in our uh, College of Medicine. And we're going to, uh, as Jefferson, welcome some of the students to the city of brotherly love, and we say yes and sisterly affection. So we will look to see you during the summers uh, at Jefferson, and then some of you will be admitted to medical school at Jefferson. So Dr. Glover, Mrs. Merle, all of the staff, uh, it is a pleasure for me to be uh, the chair of the board for the Levi Watkins Institute. And we continue to work uh, to increase the number of underrepresented minorities in medicine. It is so important. And with my work, I also am on the board of the uh, accreditation for graduate medical education. So it's getting through all of those steps and I do everything I can every day to make sure that we are not only encouraging you to attain uh, in medicine, but also paving those roads that allow the students to get there. And for those of you who are interested in cancer medicine, we also have some of the students from the Levi Watkins uh, MD uh, Institute attending a program that I had uh, that is funded by the National Cancer Institute. Uh, so some of the students have actually spent time with us in this program. And I encourage everybody here today, not only for the students, but everybody can do something. And whatever it is, whatever your talent, whatever you are able to do, whether it's contributing to um, some funds to Mrs. Merle and the uh, Institute here, whether it's helping drive a student someplace, whatever you are able to do, let's all here today get together, work together, and all contribute to the Dr. Levi Watkins Institute. So thank you so much. It is my pleasure to be here. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Next, we will have a musical selection uh, by Kendall Jackson and Anaya Johnson.
Next, we will have a, a video presentation, um, cohort two.
is supposed to be here. Hi, my name is Kendall Jackson. I'm 18 years old. I'm from Stafford, Virginia, and I am majoring in biology as a part of the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute. And the type of doctor I wanna be is a pediatrician and work with kids, and throughout my career, I want to be able to provide a safe place for black children and black families in the healthcare facilities, and I also want to become an inspiration to other young black women who are aspiring to be a doctor in the future. My name is Daniel Johnson. I am 18 years old from Chicago, Illinois, and I'm a biology major at Tennessee State University. I aspire to be a family physician and I hope to accomplish saving lives and helping people in need. I've been wanting to become a doctor for my whole life. Every time I step in a hospital, I got the sense that this is something I wanted to do. This is something I was passionate about. And even in class, um, no matter the subject, if it was something science. Hello, related, my name is Carson. It seems really interesting. Hello, my name is Cara Simmons. I am 17 years old. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and I'm a cellular and molecular biology major here at Tennessee State University. I hope to become a surgeon, and in my time being a surgeon, I would like to serve underserved communities in the U.S. as well as internationally and help them get on a better track to be more healthy overall. I've always known that I wanted to be a doctor ever since I was very young. I was really fascinated with being a doctor, um, meeting with patients, and overall interacting with them. Hello, my name is Tyler Vasquez. I'm a freshman molecular biology major from all over, but technically Charlotte, North Carolina and Kansas City, Missouri. From a young age, I didn't really have access to any physicians. So I've been consider considering primary care, especially around LGBT populations, but it's possible I might switch over to possibly oncology or something else in the future. I have time to decide. Hi, my name is Sierra Smith. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm 18 years old and I'm a biology major. I will become an anesthesiologist and I hope to reduce the racial inequalities in the medical field as well as fix the patient and physician trust between the African American community and the physicians. I was around seven years old when I decided I wanted to be a doctor and it was really through interacting with my grandparents and seeing their lack of knowledge on like medicine and their lack of trust within the field of medicine. I'm Gavin Gibson, I'm from Houston, Texas, uh, and I'm an 18 year old biology major. I hope to be a dentist, and I, in the future, I, I really hope that I can come back and establish my own practice and really help people find their smile. Because I know there's so many people that struggle with um, like finding themselves and they, um, insecurities, and I really think having a smile that you can that you're proud of is very important. I am Ashton Jackson, a freshman biology major from Memphis, Tennessee, and I am 18 years old. I thought about how the brain is one of nature's most complex pieces of engineering, so I, I, I'm starting to go into neurology now. I started a program called Determined to Be a Doctor, ran by Dr. Christina Rosendahl, who's a dentist in Memphis, Tennessee, and I started her program, and that's when I started to meet with different doctors, go on Zoom calls, you know, just knowing about what they do and how they do it and how they got there. And that just really intrigued me. And I feel like that was one of the things that sparked me wanting to be a doctor. Hello, I'm Jackson Jeter. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm a freshman in the Dr. Levi Watkins program, majoring in biology. I aspire to become an internal medicine doctor. I hope to accomplish creating a positive impact within a community. I want to create innovative programs that will inform the community about internal medicine factors. I also want to use sports as an outreach to change lifestyles and create a healthier community. Hello, my name is Lauren Smith. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. I'm 17 and I'm a biology pre-med major. I will be an OBGYN and I hope to decrease the disparities within the black community and work with specifically black women to have them in a more comfortable position when explaining their health problems. Well, one day my mom showed me a documentary about black women who have problems um, giving birth and they've been in situations where doctors didn't really listen to their problems and so that was like where it clicked and I knew that that's when I wanted to be an OBGYN. 
I am Frederick McGavick. I am 17 years old. I come from Atlanta and I wish to be a physician in emergency care. I aspire to become a physician in emergency care and I want to do that because I wish to be able to save and change the lives of any who may be traumatized or have any traumatic experiences. Uh, my name is Kendall Rugger. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I am 17 years old and I'm about to leave my Watkins Junior Scholar majoring in biology at TSU. Uh, I have an affinity for science. I've had a passion for science since the sixth grade and ever since I interacted with a neurosurgeon at Vanderbilt, uh, I became mesmerized by wanting to, be, wanting to become a doctor and I felt like this program would help me on the pathway of becoming a doctor. My name is Robert Earl Blaylock III, however, everybody calls me Robbie. I'm from Tampa, Florida, and I'm 18 years old, and my major is biology on a pre-med track. In fourth grade, I was doing a passion project about chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is CTE, and I got fascinated by the disease and how it affects many different football players and their life after football. And so I decided to study this disease all throughout middle school, high school, and that's why I wanted to become a neurologist. But then I learned the difference between the different doctors, and I felt that orthopedic surgeons or anesthesiologists are on the field and they're actually interacting with players. So I felt that would probably be a better choice for my career path. Hi, my name is Anaya Marie Johnson. I'm from South Haven, Mississippi. I am currently 18 years old, and my major is uh, pre-med in the Dr. Levi Watkins Junior Society. I hope to become an OBGYN and I hope to accomplish just erasing the gap that we have as a minority when it comes to things like pre, like just preeclampsia, how we die from hypertension, how we are generally overlooked when it comes to just simple things like even going in for a routine well woman's checkup. My name is Jemiah Gordon. Um, I'm 18 and I'm from Miami, Florida and my major is biology. I want to be an infectious disease specialist and I hope to own a clinic where I could serve underserved communities. I decided to be a doctor when I was 13. Um, I initially wanted to do the research aspect of infectious disease, but once I learned about the disparities in healthcare among some African Americans, I thought I would have a greater impact working directly with people. My name is Donnell Shaw, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, I'm 18 years old and I major in biology with a focus on molecular and cellular biology. I aspire to be a dermatologist and I hope to accomplish owning my own private practice and eventually working to make my own black skincare line that specifies in people who look like me. Throughout my years and my childhood, I've always loved helping people and giving back and I've always had like a big heart, so I just decided like, and I had a love for science, so I decided that this was really what I wanted to do. I am Mia Hanfield. I'm 18 years old from Miami, Florida, and my major is biology. I would like to be a dentist, um, specifically an orthodontist, and I would like to bridge the healthcare gap present in the dental fields and um, kind of gap the lack of knowledge in underserved communities about dentistry and oral care. My name is Zirin Becker. I'm 18 years old, majoring in biology, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. When I was in boarding school in Nigeria, I actually read a book by a noteworthy doctor, um, Gifted Hands. I've always known I wanted to be a doctor, but reading that book, it really set the course for me that I wanted to be a neurosurgeon because those surgeries really changed my life, and I, I was shocked because someone like him could do something like that for people of, from uh, such a young age to old ages, and he really changed their lives. So. When I read that book, I decided, yeah, I wanted to become a neurosurgeon. My name is Thomas Hoff. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. I'm 18 years old, and I'm a biology major. I want to be either a cardiologist or a radiologist, and I want to own my own practice, you know, maybe run my own hospital at one point, too. So I have big, big expectations and big dreams with my career. I was in seventh grade, and my grandmother, she ended up dying from heart-related problems, so I feel like I could fix, the, fix like, what happened to her through me, so that's what inspired me to become a doctor. Hi, my name is Journey Brinson. I'm from Memphis. I'm 18 years old, and I'm a biology major. So when I was 10 years old, I was in this camp called Clue Camp. It's like a club that helps kids to get hands-on with science. And basically, I got to actually hold a sheep's heart, and that was really cool for me. Like, I really, it really influenced me to have that opportunity to get hands-on. 
And so after that, I got really interested in anatomy and biology and physiology. Like I got to meet doctors and bi dissect animals and stuff. So it really solidified my career choice. Hi, I'm Kaylin Skates. I'm 17 from Atlanta, Georgia, and my major is biology. I would like to be a doctor mainly because I feel like an urge, like I feel the calling for me to come and help people. Um, I'm an empath, I love like being around people, supporting people, and I feel that like since I was four I wanted to be a doctor. Originally I wanted to be a neurosurgeon after watching Ben Carson, but then I was like maybe not, but I do really love hanging around children and um, helping children, so I have settled on becoming a pediatric anesthesiologist or a pediatric oncologist. My name is Cameron Rayner. I am 18 years old. Uh, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm majoring in biology. My mom bought me the Gifted Hands book uh, by Dr. Carson, and I guess that was more so my first introduction into uh, like neurology as a whole, like the inner workings of the brain. And ever since then, I've been just completely encapsulated by uh, everything to do with the entire subject. Okay, the, the white coat ceremony and reciting of the Hippocratic Oath signifies entrance into the medical dental fields where students learn and display extremely high levels of professionalism and empathy. Today, the physician's white coat is viewed as a symbol of medical excellence. Our white coat ceremony and oath signifies our students' commitment to excellence and preparation for medical dental school and honoring the legacy of Dr. Levi Watkins, Jr. Could I get the white coat presenters to come to the front now and Dr. John Robinson to come to the podium? Well, good afternoon. All right. So I'm going to direct you all, if you haven't already, to Put me out of class, I'll tell you. All right. I'm going to direct you, if you haven't already, to page five of uh, your program, uh, where it gives a, a clear explanation of the students that are in our uh, Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute Accelerated Pathway Program. And so uh, in this cohort, too, we have students that are part of our TSU Meharry Medical Dental uh, Scholars Pathway Program. Um, and those students um, will complete uh, the biology degree in cell and molecular biology within three years. Um, they are preparing from day one um, for uh, the MCAT and the DAT. And uh, the goal is at the beginning of their fourth year, they will be in medical and dental school um, at uh, Meharry Medical College. And then um, we have also a part of this cohort uh, group of students, nine students in this group, 
uh, that are part of our uh, healthcare scholars. And so same requirements for them. They'll go through the degree in three program in biology. Um, they will complete the uh, MCAT. Uh, all of those are uh, medical track students. And then in their fourth year, will represent uh, their first year in medical school. So I'm here to introduce to you and present to you the TSU Meharry Medical Scholars. And uh, thank you so much to our medical and dental colleagues here. Many of them are on our steering committee uh, who uh, I will say to you scholars uh, were very instrumental in you being admitted to this program. So you probably recognize some of them uh, behind the mask or without the mask. Uh, but we're very proud of you. Uh, uh, extraordinary group of students you are. And so, uh, so I'm here to introduce you now. So uh, part of the TSU Meharry Medical Scholars Group includes Mr. Robert Blaylock III. You come up. We have Ashton Jackson. Kendall Jackson. James Jeter III. Anaya Johnson. Agazir Mbike. Cameron Rayner. Kendall Rucker. Kara Simmons. Tyler Vasquez. And our TSU Meharry Dental Scholars, Gavin Gibson. And Ms. Mia Hanfield. Dr. Robinson, can we please get the uh, presenters to please roll the scholars? Right. Thank you. So now our scholars, we are now about to um, take the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Scholars Oath. Uh, hopefully you have that oath with you right now. So please repeat after me. We, the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Scholars, oh, oh. Please raise your right hand. Pledge to strive for excellence in our preparation for entrance into the medical dental profession. We pledge to be lifelong learners and to remain current with the changing trends in the profession. Diligently preparing our minds and bodies to uplift and provide care for the underserved. We pledge to serve as a symbol of justice and equity in the healthcare community. By removing the barriers and repressive structures that affect the underserved and minority communities. Most importantly, we pledge to honor the legacy of Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. and 
his mission of providing health care with integrity, empathy, and compassion for all. Thank you. Please stay there for one second. Okay, now we'll have Dr. Sharon Peters to introduce the healthcare scholars. Our other nine scholars, healthcare scholars, Ms. Journey Brinson. Ms. Jemaya L. Gordon. Mr. Thomas Hoff. Yeah. Mr. Daniel Johnson. Yeah. Mr. Frederick McGavick. Mr. Donnell Shaw. Ms. Caitlin Skates, Ms. Lauren Smith, and Ms. Sierra Smith. Presenters, please robe the scholars. Now for the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Scholars Oath. Scholars, please repeat after me. We, the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Scholars, pledge to strive for excellence in our preparation for entrance into the medical dental profession. We pledge to be lifelong learners and to remain current with the changing trends in the profession. diligently preparing our minds and bodies to uplift and provide care for the underserved. We pledge to serve as a symbol of justice and equity in the healthcare community. By removing the barriers and repressive structures that affect the underserved and minority communities. Most importantly, we pledge to honor the legacy of Dr. Levi Watkins, Jr.
and his mission of providing health care with integrity, empathy, and compassion for all. Thank you. Hold on. We'd like to thank our presenters and scholars. You may take your seat. Thank you so much. Next, we will have congratulatory remarks uh, from Dr. Artenzia Young Sigler, Department Chair of the Department of Biological Sciences here at Tennessee State University. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. This is a joyous occasion. And at this moment, Dr. Glover has asked me to ask our trustee, Van Pennock, if he would like to have a word. Dr. Glover has asked me to ask you if you would like to have a word. <laughs> well, good afternoon. For those of you familiar with that book of faith and history, I feel a little bit like Jeremiah uh, at this moment. But at any rate, uh, let me congratulate all of you for uh, getting started on this journey. Uh, we look forward to you making us very proud at TSU. In fact, I had an opportunity to talk with some people just this week about the students and about the university. And your group was one of the ones that I mentioned as making us very proud and that we're looking forward to you making uh, some serious contributions to, uh, to society. So thank you so much. Thank you, Trustee Pinnock, Van Pinnock. Wow, what a great day. Not only for this institution, but for you as well. I, on behalf of the Department of Biological Sciences here at Tennessee State University, would like to just say congratulations to you. And at this moment, I would just like for everybody to stand and just celebrate our scholars today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Hey, guys, you can do better than this. If this was a football team, y'all would be hooping and hollering. These are our scholars. Congratulations, scholars. Absolutely. On behalf of the Biological Sciences and Tennessee State University, I just stand today to just echo everybody that has said congratulations to you. Congratulations on a job well done, on your incredible success. I knew you could do it when you first got here. I don't know if you did, but we all had faith in you and we all knew that you could do it. I'm incredibly proud of you. And I know that your family is incredibly proud of you. And I know that your village is absolutely incredibly proud of you. So your village includes not only your parents and your grandparents and your friends, but also your extended family, your mentors, your coaches for some of you, but also your church members, you know, all those church members that prayed for you, those people also included in your village. So don't forget 
the people who are in your village who are praying for you and who are in your corner and basically cheering for you. But above all else, God is pleased with you. For the believers and the non-believers, it's okay. God is pleased with you today, that you are living up to your potential, the gift that he gave you, what he poured into you, you're gonna pour out into society, into, into other people. You have proven every day that you are amazing leaders compassionate leaders and scholars and passionate about what you do. I've seen you work hard every day. You've gone through some really tough, challenging times. Some of you have been through COVID, monkeypox, all those other things that's gonna come along. But you are gonna be on the forefront in treating people and taking us to the next level to overcome all of these diseases and emerging diseases that are to come. This is an amazing accomplishment. It's just one step in your journey to achieving all of those goals that you have set for yourself. Your ability to relentless, relentlessly search for knowledge and persevere and have that grit is the, is the key to success for today and many successes to come. As you work toward future successes, uh, I, just like your speaker, Dr. Woodard said, you have to behave in humility. Yeah, grace, kindness, appreciation of others, love for your community, love for your fellow man. And for this, and in the care for others, you will rise to the top. You have worked so hard. We acknowledge that today, your hard work. We have pushed you in areas that you never thought you'd be pushed, but you have survived and you have persevered. Your abilities uh, basically have let you overcome limits that you thought that you had to places where there are no limits for you. Basically, your hard work and pushing your abilities have led you to today and have made the success happen for you today. I and the rest of the Department of Biological Sciences are in your corner. We're here for you. We're ready to take on the challenges to help you take those challenges on as well. So today I stand here and just say congratulations. Come by and see me. If you have any issues, any problems, Dr. Robinson, he's also in our department as well, Dr. Cooney, Dr. Um, O'Hare, all the other faculty and staff in biology. I also stand here on behalf of the Faculty Senate. I'm also chair of the Faculty Senate. So every faculty member that's here at Tennessee State University is invested in you as well. So congratulations on today. We're so proud of you, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Next we'll have the introduction of cohort one by Ms. Lolita Hodge. This is a great day on today in the land of golden sunshine. Don't you agree? I feel like Frankie uh, Beverly. I'm just happy to see you and me back in stride again because with the pandemic and everything that happened, it's just great to see everybody that came out here today. Congratulations, Cohort 2. You're doing great and amazing things, and I know your family is proud. But there is another group that we're also very, very proud of. And this lovely bunch and these lovely royal blue blazers represent cohort one of the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute. And give them a hand clap also, because they are doing amazing and great things. They have a, 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 a semester this year that's very rigorous but they need all of our support, but they're doing amazing, and we expect great things from each and every one of you. I would like to introduce them to you on today and just kind of tell you what their future endeavors are in the medical field. First, we have Ms. Samantha Altadort. <laughs> Samantha is gonna be a pediatrician in family medicine. Would you come across the front, please? Thank you. Mr. Alan Bethea. Alan is going to be a sports medicine physician in family medicine practice. Ms. Taylor Brown. 
obstetrics, gynecology specializing in maternal fetal medicine, Mr. Dakota Elliott. Dakota is going into the area of cardiovascular surgery. Camille Haskins. Internal medicine and I am subspecialties such as immunology. Madison Hilliard. Family medicine specializing in dermatology. Brooke Majors. Now, neonatologist. Nia, neonatologist. Makaya McCrary. Neurosurgery. George Pickens. Family care physician, Ryla Trailer. Orthopedic trauma surgeon, Michaela Hearn. Orthodontist, Jayden Knight. Orthodontist, Sean Cheney. Family physician, Kayla Davis. Pediatrics, Xavier Herbs. Neuroscientist with a specialization in neurology diseases and ailments. Zaria Foster. Anesthesiology or pediatric psychology. Jamari Jemison, bio, biopsychologist, concentration in research. John Kim, oncology. Ashton Terrell, dermatologist. Daniel Wilkerson. anesthesiology. This is our cohort one who's charting the path for this program. Uh, they are all exceptional and bright and we just be looking for them in the future. Give them a round of applause and don't they look great in their blue. Thank you Ms. Hodge. You guys can be seated. Thank you. Oh, oh well, he's taking pictures of you. Okay, you can be seated. <laughs> Next, we will have, we will recognize our, uh, the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Society members, and this will be done by Drs. Kimberly Cooney and Josh O'Hare, advisors for the society. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. O'Hare. This is Dr. Cooney. Uh, we are both the Dr. Levi Watkins Junior Society Advisors. This is our first semester doing this, so we're really excited. So I'm gonna ask right now if all the society members, would you guys all please stand so we can recognize you? This is only about half of our group. Um, some of them are still in classes and stuff, so I appreciate you all for, for showing up today, and uh, we look forward to a lot of great things. So thanks again, everybody. And I want to give a special shout out to our officers. Can the president stand? Vice president, treasurer, secretary. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to Drs. O'Hare and Cooney and the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Society members. We will now have a recognition of partners in our closing remarks by Dean Barbara Merrill. 
I just wanted to say something before Ms. Merrill comes up. Um, you know, it's just amazing just how she's taking this program. Y'all have heard me say it time and time again, how um, she wrote the vision. She told it to us. We helped write our parts, and we ran with it. And it's because of her that this program is here today. And then to listen to the speakers that we have is always a connection with her. So she's not new to this. She's true to this. She is true to this. And if you've ever had the opportunity to be in her presence and travel with her or anything, we could be in the airport in Oklahoma and somebody will say, Dean Merle, Dean Merle. And like I said, she's so humble, and I know she's probably telling me to sit down, but she is so humble, but you know, she is just a jewel, and she is truly a person that is serving in her purpose, and I believe that is why God is blessing her to have long life, because she still has some Levi Watkins scholars to get through this program, Miss Barbara Merle. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is overwhelming, and it is a joy to hear Ms. Hyde surprise me with all these comments and then to give me an applause, and I do appreciate it. It is my joy, and it really is my life, uh, to work with the Dr. Levi Watkins Institute, and I appreciate the opportunity. So today, uh, Dr. McMurray, TSU family and friends, today represents another dream fulfilled as we welcome cohort two to the Dr. Levi Watkins Institute, these scholars rank among the most, the top graduates of high schools in America this past year. We're excited that you've chosen to pursue your dreams with us, and that dream is to become a physician or a dentist. Now, would you stand, stand again? I just wanna congratulate you from this point and have you stand. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, you may be seated. Uh, cohort one, would you stand please? I have a special commendations and congratulations to you because you're the first group. You set the stage, right? You came in with nothing, no, just us, and we all worked together, and you made all the dean's list the first semester, second semester. I'm just so proud of you, and you're continuing on all your success. So you have set the curve, you set the standard for all others to follow. And I'm grateful for you, all the work that you put in and the work that you're still doing. And you hear about the medical schools available and I'll talk about them in just a moment. So congratulations, hang in there. We're gonna get there together, thank you. And I'd like to express appreciation to Hospital Corporation of America who actually just heard about us and reached out to us and said, we want to know more about this program. And of course, we told them all about the program, and today we've got $1.4 million. Isn't that wonderful? And that's due to the people behind me and all sides who worked so diligently to make things happen for this group. So that helps us to take care, as we have promised, for the education of each of the students who are in this program. Then, for the parents and families, would you just please stand? All the families of these young people. We wanna just give you one big round of applause, because you are the ones who are responsible for this, and we wanna say thank you. You've entrusted your children with us, and we appreciate that. And I think you think that we are taking care of them. So I appreciate you being here today. As we remember from whence we came some years ago, like two, it took us two years and three months to put this program together. It's from the first day we met until today, that's two years and three months that we've been working for the Dr. Levi Watkins program, and this is our result. A dome with $1.4 million and some other grifts I'm gonna announce before the day is over. Uh, as we remember from whence we have come, I would like to give thanks to Dr. Annie Garraway, the sister 
of Dr. Levi Watkins who stepped forward and said, I will commit to help this program if we have a program similar to this in my brother's memory. And so we went to the, the board and started writing exactly what we thought this program should be. And this is what this program is, and it's in its second year, and you see the results of our work. So Dr. Glover, we appreciate your support and for this initiative, and we know that we have it to continue. I appreciate the opportunity to be named the leader of this program, and I consider it an honor and a humble for the opportunity to work with all of you. We have an advisory board composed of presidents and CEOs of medical schools, uh, medical professionals, community leaders, and alumni. Uh, we have a select committee composed of TSU uh, employees who can step forward and say, I want to help. So those 25 colleagues have worked bi-weekly in meetings over two years to make this program possible, and they continually meet bi-weekly. My Harry problem, prob, I mean my Harry partners, my Harry Medical College partners. We are so grateful. Will you please stand today? Let's give them a round of applause. We appreciate you so much. These are the persons who met with us weekly on Friday to write this program, to come up with the curriculum. They did a wonderful job this summer giving you the opportunity to do shadowing, and we're so grateful. Not only did they assist with this program, but they guaranteed us 10 positions uh, for physicians who are medical and five for physicians who are going to be dentists, so we appreciate that. That was our first collaboration, and today you heard Dr. Mitchell talk about another collaboration that we will have at Sidney Kimball Medical College in Jefferson University. So while talking about that, I want to also talk about the volunteers, the consultants, the colleagues who brought their individual expertise to assist with this program, and to you as well, we are grateful. Uh, the, I always want to recognize the students who are in the DMI Watkins Society. They are juniors, sophomores, and seniors. They are ones who did not come in the accelerated program, but we reach out with, long, with great anticipation to assist them in their journeys as well to medical school. And I'm most appreciative for their new advisors and also for them for being here today and for the work that they're going to do this year. So you've heard the collaboration with Meher Medical College, who stepped up to the plate. But I must admire all of the work that they have done for us. And to say that this program actually started at Tennessee State in Meher in the 50s, 1950. So what happened is we got together and revitalized the program, brought it into this new setting, and have it available for you to proceed. So thank you for doing that. And of course, we're happy with Sidney Kimball Medical College and the work that Dr. Mitchell has done in forging that uh, collaboration. She is a graduate of TSU, a very friend, good friend of Dr. Watkins and of this program. So I want to acknowledge the presence of uh, anyone from, I was looking for some from Belmont. I'm not sure that you, yes, please stand up. We are look, this is the, Give them, Doctor. We are so excited to have you present with us today, and uh, this is the Assistant Dean of the Thomas Frist Medical Center, and the Assistant Mr. Caleb. We've been walk talking on the telephone and in meetings as well, and we're so grateful that you're here. So you've heard about the new medical school who's going to be in Nashville, Tennessee. It's called the Thomas Frist Medical School. It's if you go to 28th and just keep riding, you'll come straight to the medical school. So we're excited about what you're doing and we're happy to be friends. Okay, and Vanderbilt University, I think, is working virtually today. So we expect our relationship and friendship with them as well. I'd like to acknowledge our sponsors. In addition to Hospital Corporation of America, we also have Microsoft, Baxter International, the March Foundation, Truist Bank, Lowe's, Regents Bank, Brian Collins Foundation, the Regents Foundation, and the Janet Myers Foundation. So we acknowledge and give thanks to the individual contributions of many who have contributed 
through our web page and also through the Tennessee State University Foundation for the Dr. Levi Watkins Institute. And we welcome the support from all who will share our vision of inclusion, equity, and opportunity in healthcare. And we plan to change the face of healthcare in America. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Merrill. That concludes our ceremony, and I think now we will have the singing of the alma mater. What's on the back of your program? songbirds here we're gonna we're gonna start it off all right let's go first stanza all right in the land of golden sunshine by the colors fertile shore stands a school for greater service one that we adore Alma mater, how we love thee, love thy white and blue. May we strive to meet thy mandates with faith and truth. Happy homecoming.